Fearmonger in chief Nancy Pelosi had the security fence put back up around the Capitol because walls only provide security when they're protecting Democrats. In anticipation of the sure to be violent justice for J6 rally this past weekend, it was a protest of the political over prosecution of nine nonviolent protesters who entered the Capitol on January 6. Liberal media outlets attacked conservative outlets for downplaying the threat. But as usual, the hysterical liberal outlets were hysterically wrong. President Trump even warned supporters to stay away from the rally because it was a trap and that leftist agitators would try to stir up trouble so they could be blamed and arrested for it. And he wasn't the only one who smelled a trap. The handful of nonviolent rally attendees were outnumbered by all the security people, some of whom were laughably trying to blend in with the right wingers and were about as convincing as when Bob Hope used to dress up as a hippie for comedy sketches. It reached the height of absurdity when the undercover feds reportedly arrested someone for carrying a weapon. And it turned out he was also an undercover cop. Right, I'm going to get the crit. Get back there. What happened? Back up, please. Cruiser 100, we have the individual stop. You got to just give us a little space, all right? Give us a little bit of space. Give us a little space. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you on the cover? Are you part of the event? I'm just here. Let's hope this helps pound the last nail into the coffin of the idiotic idea that the biggest threats to America are white supremacists and, of course, the weather. Now, when it's trash day and you only have one hefty bag left, you know what you do. You try to stuff all your garbage into it, right? Well, that's kind of what congressional Democrats are doing, treating their $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation bill. Since that type of bill can pass with only 51 votes and isn't subject to filibuster, they've tried to cram every garbage idea that the left's got into that one bag, from expensive climate change boondoggles to amnesty for millions of illegal immigrants. But Sunday, the Senate parliamentarian popped their hefty bag. Elizabeth McDonough ruled that just because something involves money, and of course everything Congress does involves money, well, that doesn't make it a budget issue. Major non-budgetary legislation can't be passed with 51 votes in a budget reconciliation bill. So the illegal immigrant amnesty cannot be included. Since no Republicans support it, that ought to kill it. But the Biden White House, which is yet to hesitate to do a flamenco dance all over the Constitution, urged Democrats to come up with some other creative end run around Senate rules to get the amnesty passed with just 51 votes. What should be happening instead is that the parliamentarian should yank out all the other things that have no business being in a budget reconciliation bill. One other obstacle that Biden would have to get around is Senator Joe Manchin, who already said he's not going to back a spending bill that big. And he's reportedly saying privately that he thinks the Senate ought to take a strategic pause until 2022 before voting on the bill. That would be an election year when many Democrats in swing states and districts might not be too keen to put their names on a garbage bag full of government bloating, debt exploding, freedom killing progressivism. Meanwhile, some far leftists are demanding that Biden get tough with congressional Democrats and just order them to pass the bill. Considering that his approval rating is now down to the low mid 40s, and a new survey finds that 55% of voters in seven Democrat-controlled swing districts think the $3.5 trillion bill is wasteful and unnecessary, that doesn't give him much leverage for threatening Congress members, unless he threatens to publicly endorse them if they don't do what he wants. Lastly, here are the latest dispatches from Afghanistan, where we're continually assured that only about 100 Americans are still waiting to get out and that we'll be able to work everything out with the new and more moderate Taliban. Well, after weeks of the Taliban holding up flights of evacuees, one plane, one plane was finally allowed to take off. 
As for the others, in spite of the Taliban's claims, that it's going to be more moderate and cooperative. Biden's spokesman, Ned Price, said they've pulled every available lever, but the Taliban are still holding up the flights. Gee, that sounds an awful lot like a hostage situation. Really, Joe? I mean, have you really pulled every available lever? And then there's a heartbreaking story about an American citizen who lost 18 of her family members in the Kabul suicide bombing and is stuck there and, of course, is terrified. She broke down while telling a TV reporter how the State Department is ignoring her pleas for help and saying, sorry, we can't do anything for you. You can find more details on that story in one of the links in the description. While it's getting harder to get reliable news out of Afghanistan, there are also some reports that the Taliban are methodically tracking down Afghans who helped the U.S. and, of course, whom Biden promised to evacuate, but then didn't. It includes a report of women being watched constantly and terrified to go to school or work and Taliban militants decapitating two boys ages 9 and 10. There's another link in the description for more on that story. This is why the Biden supporting media want to talk about nothing but vaccine mandates. And Biden knew that it would turn people's eyes from the atrocities that he caused in Afghanistan to the atrocities that he's trying to cause here. But if anyone thinks that Afghanistan is still being talked about too much or that it's old news, I'd like to remind you that America never, never leaves its people behind. And America never negotiates with terrorists. Well, that is until Biden came along and left American citizens and thousands of green card holders, left them behind in the hands of one of the most brutal regimes on the planet, and is now forced to negotiate with them because of his pettiness and incompetence. This story really does matter, and it will continue to matter long after Joe Biden is gone from the White House. He's made sure of that. Now, if you'd like to stay on top of the stories that really matter, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Also, leave a like and a comment. That helps a lot to get our videos viewed by more people. And I hope you'll join me for a live stream this Friday. Come armed with your best questions. And I hope you'll sign up for my newsletter to get the news of the day delivered to your email inbox twice a day, every day for free. That's going to do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.